If you don't know anything about 3D printing, then you've come to the right video, because I don't either. And when Eligu asked me if they could send me one of their 3D printers, I told them I don't know anything about 3D printing and I wouldn't know how to use it. That's okay, they said. Just have fun. I'm sure you'll figure it out. So this is a video about my journey into 3D printing and the process of how it's done. Together, we're going to learn all about the steps to printing a 3D object, how it's done and the equipment we use to do it. We'll also look into how we prepare something for printing and what to do once we've printed it. Welcome to Tabletop Ready, my name's Michael and in this video let's go on a journey together and learn about 3D printing. So here's what I've sent, so here's the printer and the cleaner and curer for the resin. They arrived in two massive boxes like that, um, one box for each of the units. Um, not everything's fully assembled here so I'm going to work on that in just a second. I just wanted to give you sort of a quick look. I wasn't expecting them to be so quite large. I think everything's just a lot bigger than I thought it was going to be. So here we are on the website. So I thought we'd just have a quick overview of some of the features of the printer. So the Eligu Mars 4 Ultra offers exceptional printing quality in details. It features a 7 inch 9K mono LCD. It captures every tiny detail allowing you to produce highly detailed models with an incredible 18 microns XY precision. Coblite source and Fresnel collimating lens. Experience vertical and uniform exposure thanks to the Coblite source and Fresnel collimating lens. I have no idea what that means. Sounds impressive. This ensures that your models have a smooth and even surface finish. And that's what we want, is a smooth and even surface finish. So it must be good. There is a large cooling fan and heat conducting copper tubes positioned next to the cob light source for rapid heat dissipation. So your cob light source isn't gonna heat up. It's good to know. The upgraded air purifier has a protective plastic case to safeguard the built-in activated carbon filter during transportation and effectively remove resin odor during printing. And with this printer, you get a program called Voxel Dance Tango Slicer and you get a license code for it as well. Now we've had a look at what we've been sent, I'm eager to finish setting everything up and learning how to use it. And whilst I'm getting everything set up, I do want to thank the channel members and patrons who very generously support Tabletop Ready and make these videos possible. You can also support the channel and the content I make by giving the videos a like and leaving a comment. I really love hearing about your own hobby. I've just finished setting everything up and it was more straightforward than I thought. The printer has a touch screen so we can easily navigate the different functions and the printer even comes with a USB stick with files and software already loaded onto it. There's a resin tray which is removable and there's a carbon filter which slots into the back to help eliminate those printing odours. So I've just finished setting up the printer and the curing station and I think we're now ready to do a test print. And doing the test print is going to be pretty straightforward because there's a file that comes on the USB stick that comes with the printer. So there's not going to be any messing around having to get a file from the computer and then sending it over to the printer. And remember, I haven't done this before, so we are going to be doing everything together. And that includes getting a print ready, doing a print, getting it cleaned and then curing it. So I hope you're ready. So there is a file on the USB stick we can use to do our first test print. But first, we're going to have to get our resin ready. The resin I'm using is a water washable resin and it comes in a massive bottle like this. I'm using this resin because it was also sent along with the printer. Again, I'm new to all of this, so I'm not really the guy to be asking about the different kinds of resins and what they're used for. But I do know the resin that I am using is recommended and ideal for the printer that I'm using. So let's pour the resin into the tray ready for printing 
and whenever we're handling the resin we do need to make sure we're wearing protective gloves and a mask and then when we're ready we can start the test print. So we've got the USB stick in. Again I've not done this before so I don't even know if this is going to work. So go into the USB file, print and test. I'm going to guess quick test model standard. Print. So obviously you'll want the cover on when doing the print, I'm just doing it so you can see what's happening. The way a resin printer works is it uses UV light to set the liquid resin and it builds our print in layers. The file we send over to the printer will have each layer saved so the printer knows what areas to set the resin. Once it's done setting a layer, you'll see it moves up ready for the next layer and slowly our object is built up. So I've stopped the printing. I'm not really sure what's happened, but nothing's printing on the actual plate. I think it started, so I'm gonna have to have a look and then we'll give it another go. I've removed the excess resin and as you can see, it has printed something and there's even something on the actual plate. So I'm thinking what's happened is, is that it's not cured right and it's not stuck to each other maybe. The other thing as well is I might have um, used the wrong file for printing. So this thing that I was trying to print wasn't set up correctly. So I'm just going to go away now and reset everything up and make sure the actual plate is leveled correctly because that might be another issue. And then I'm going to try and print off what I think is the file that is actually meant to be printed off. So we'll see how that goes. So we're in the software that comes with the printer. It's the slicing software that you use to get the objects ready for printing. And this is the object that I set to print first. And I believe this is a factory test object. As you can see, it's quite, it's a, like a, a mesh. I'm not sure if this is the reason it failed to print or, and what I think is the main problem why it didn't print was because I didn't level the plate properly. So you can see what happens is the objects are split up into different slices and all this information is sent over to the printer. So if we have a look at the object that we should have printed off, it's a chess piece. And as you can see, these are all the different slices as we move our way through. So where the white is showing, I'm guessing that's where the UV light comes through and sets the resin and the plate moves up and down. And eventually it builds up to create your 3D object or your print. So it might have been the leveling plate not set properly or it might be because I chose the wrong file. So as you can see this time the prints worked. I think it might have been just a combination of not leveling the plate well enough and also just using the wrong file. So it was really user error, but I'm really glad that we managed to get a print. So I'm just going to leave it to sort of the resin, the excess resin to drip off. And then we'll have a look at cleaning it and using the curing station. Once the print is finished, we'll need to remove it from the plate using a provided scraping tool. Now we've managed to successfully print something off, it's time to get it cleaned up and cured. 
which is going to be made a lot easier using the Mercury washing and curing station. So it's a wash and cure two in one, powerful curing mode, and there is a sealed washing mode. So it comes with a tub and you put water in it. And I believe there's like a spinning agitator. So there's magnets on the bottom and they'll spin the agitator to help sort of remove the excess resin. The resin I've been sent is water washable. So I'm not going to be using any sort of IPA or any kind of other cleaner. I'm just going to be using water because I'm really new. I'm brand new to this as well. So the fact that you can just use water is very appealing to me. So it's got 360 all round curing. Touch the button, you can see the setting time and remaining time and the machine will beep when it's completed, saving time and effort. Because we're using water washable resin, we only need water to clean the resin and the station has a tub with a spinning agitator at the bottom which will spin the water around helping to move any excess resin off the print. We can also get in with a brush the resins come with to help with the process of cleaning. When we're done with the print, one of the things we'll need to do is make sure to clean the tray. So one of the things I wanted to do was just leave the liquid resin in overnight, just to see if it's affected it anyway. It's probably not really a good idea to leave it sort of out and exposed for too long. But I just thought maybe if it started to harden or affect the resin being out of the bottle too long. But it hasn't really affected it at all. First of all we can save any leftover resin that's still in the tray and pour it back into the bottle through a strainer. You'll see that I've made an absolute mess here trying to film the process so don't be me and take your time. Be sure to use a silicon scraper rather than a metal one to prevent any damage to the tray. The tray itself can be cleaned with water as well. So here's the aftermath of a few prints and getting them cleaned and cured. And honestly it's not that bad but I do recommend definitely having an area that you're not worried about getting messy. Once our print has completely dried we can swap out our tub for the small circular platform. Place your print inside and then start up the curing process and it's going to be about 3-5 to five minutes depending on the size of your print. I know we're able to clean our prints without the station and we can even leave them in the sun to cure, but the Mercury station has just made the whole process a lot quicker and more straightforward and the fact that we can clean our resin with just water means no headaches, literally. So here we have our test model, so that's a chess piece and it's designed in a way that shows off what the printer's capable of and what you can print off with it. So I'm really impressed. It's very clear and defined. You can see all the text. It's very clear and readable. And we've even got some smaller text on top. It's also hollow as well. So it's got like a little set of stairs and a double helix. Everything's very sharp. So I'm really happy with how this has come out. So here's our print. I can definitely tell the resin is less floppy and squishy after being cured. And it seems like everything is working and our print looks great. But I do want to print something else and see how we can get something ready for printing. So as well as the test print, I did want to have a go myself at setting up a proper print. So to stop me from looking like a complete idiot, I have spent some time in this software just sort of learning the basics. So there are things to make sure we can have a successful print. So here I've set up the next object I want to print. And pretty much this software does everything for you. So you'll see how the piece is orientated against the plate. Now if you think about it, this is upside down to how it is, how it's actually going to be. And for best practice, they say to have like the back towards the plate where these struts are attached. The other thing that I've done is hollow it out. I don't think you have to do this, but this is a way to save resin. So as you can see, as we move through the different slices, it's hollowed out. You can refine it and go into more detail about what you actually want, but it's pretty straightforward 
coming in here and having a mess around. So as well as hollowing it out, the other thing that you'll need to do is have a little hole. And that's where the resin will pour out as it's printing. Because if there isn't a hole, you're going to get li liquid resin still stuck in the middle. So that's just a quick look at an object that's ready for printing with the support. I've hollowed it out. I've positioned it against the plate to make sure it prints properly. I find it all fascinating the way the printers work and the fact that someone's come up this way of printing objects. So here's the more sort of complicated print with the struts added. Hopefully it's hollow. I'm just letting the excess resin drip off for now and then we'll get it removed from the plate and cleaned. As you can see this object was printed with the supports in place so let's see how easy it is to remove them. I do think I was worried a little too much about damaging the print but the resin is pretty robust so with a bit more pressure applied the support came away cleanly. For me having a 3D printer means we're able to bring more personalisation into our hobby and it's not just about being able to print off more miniatures but we're also able to customise with accessories create more interesting bases, or even create replacement parts for our miniatures making them more unique to us. Then after the supports were removed, I washed and cured the print. So here's the second object we printed off. This is the object that I had set up in the software with the support. And as you can see, you can see where the support was attached on the back. And I'm guessing you can reduce that by messing around with the settings or even just sort of reducing the amount of struts in the support because there is some texture as well. So I'm sure that can be worked on. I wouldn't worry too much about the white residue. That's just why I didn't let the water completely dry off before curing. And it did print off hollow. You can see the drainage hole which, which worked. So there's no resin still sitting inside. But one of the things I did notice is that there is a bulge on the bottom. And I think that's just because that's where the print was sat flat while it was curing. So this bit here didn't get cured. And inside, I'm guessing like the air inside must have expanded and pushed it out. So just make sure to cure any base as well. But overall, I'm really impressed with the detail and quality that it can print. And I'm really looking forward to seeing what we're able to do with it in the future. Again, I really want to thank Elegoo for sending me the printer and the curing station because it gave me a great opportunity to learn about 3D printing and all the different equipment that's used because it's actually more accessible and beginner friendly than I thought it was going to be. And I'm now really excited to be able to use 3D printing in my own hobby as well as future projects on the channel. We've now managed to successfully print and clean and cure some 3D objects and hopefully you've gained enough knowledge and confidence to give it a go yourself. I've really enjoyed the process of making this video so I do want to say a massive thank you to CappyB118 and Riley Reynolds who made this video possible with their support and donations. And if you want to support the channel as well and the content I make, then you can do that by becoming a channel member or joining the Patreon. Both give you early access to tutorials and you'll be kept up to date with what I'm doing behind the scenes. When I started this video, I wasn't sure if 3D printing was for me, but now I've done some printing and learnt more about it, I'm looking forward to learning more and applying it to future projects. If you enjoyed this video then let me know by leaving a like and let me know in the comments below. I really enjoy making these videos and I hope you find them useful. Make sure to subscribe if you don't want to miss out on future content and I'll see you in the next video.